show, here she is! Welcome to the last I show did. of season three. Morning, Robbie. Go to the store and get me some more beer! <laughs> she doesn't take anything for granted. She puts in the effort. I'm gonna go work now. Reba is the hardest working woman in show business. <laughs> you come back from hiatus and everyone says what they do and, oh, I made an album. We are in Houston, Texas. If you're gonna do a job, do it. And do it to the best of your ability. You gotta give 110% all the time. There is nobody more deserving of the Johnny Cash Visionary Award than Reba McIntyre. Man, that's the icing on the cake. We do Reba over a five-day schedule, and we start our week with a table reading. The table reading is where we read the script uh, top to bottom and uh, actually do it as a little performance in front of the writers, producers, studio, and network. Welcome to the last nice show good. of season three. Good morning, Robbie. Did you ever think you'd say those words? No, I did not. Okay, we have no guest cast with us. Today. The last show and the first show are always the hardest because you just want them to be the best you know you're it's the start and the end it's the, the the things that stick with people you can't just go eh well we kind of missed on that one. you gotta hit it's gotta work hey mom how was work remember when i only had to work till three o'clock and i'd come home and you'd say hey mom how was work and i'd say horrible yeah well now that eugene is forcing me to work till seven how do you think work was Horribler. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. This episode resolves a couple of elements that we've had going through the show during the course of the season, which is called a seasonal arc. What we did in the beginning was we had three stories that kind of pointed towards this thing, which is primarily a relationship between Reba and her ex-husband. Mom? Well, you'll never guess what. Tell me what. We're getting our own apartment. You know, if you think it's a good idea. Mom? Barbara Jean, I'm serious. It will never be a good time for me to try to convince my ex-husband to have another baby with the woman he left me for. That would be weird even for this family. <laughs> Wait a second here. You took my advice and talked to Eugene, didn't you? Come on, admit it. Okay, yeah, I did. I knew you would. And when you realized you're not going to compromise on one of your core issues, he caved, right? He fired me. <laughs> Following the table reading, we will have a note session with studio and network. All right, what do you got for us? It kind of feels like we have this act out of Reba being fired, and, and it doesn't feel like, of the three stories, that actually feels like it's kind of the least emotional that we're least invested in right now. You're fired. You feel emotional now? <laughs> <laughs> if somebody says to you, I don't get this in the story, you can't say to them, yes, you do. If Reba truly loses her job, mm -hmm. I mean, Reba would be losing health care benefits. She would be not knowing how she's going to pay the rent. There's going to be a lot of problems for this family, and it's not really playing that way. The thing that I keep stressing on, and Norma keeps stressing on, it's got to be believable. Our fans are not stupid, and they're going to think, well, that would never happen. You don't want to hear that. Forget about the Ruby getting fired story. And when it got be a good competition here in the beginning of next season. That's what Start I was thinking. A good, yeah. act, a, a good arc for her to struggle through some stuff. But I, we had some problems this morning, and I liked the script when I read it, and sometimes you have to hear it to go, yeah, it doesn't really quite... Uh, you know, that act break, I wasn't with it at all. Why wasn't it, why wasn't I affected? The only more? thing that I'm really worried about is getting too poor, pitiful Reba. Right. Because if I'm fired by Eugene, that's one thing, that's business. But if the kids are coming back saying, oh gosh, we can't move out because Kira left, Dad left. Right, you know, we're I, I don't want to go that way. All the audience is going to go, oh, poor, poor, poor Reba. Then it's going to get real maudlin. It's going to get real sad. Part of the business is knowing you can fix it is having the courage to say, yeah, this doesn't work, so we got to tear it all apart and put it back together again. Thank you, great show. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Wednesday after table, we go back to the writers' rooms, figure out what it is that we have that works. Then we figure out what doesn't work, and then we try to structure that. It felt like there was a lot more to play with Van, feeling like suddenly he has authority in the household. I don't know if it's enough, though. At the same time, following the note session, we begin our rehearsal process. What did you call me? Reba. 
And look, if I'm going to be a breadwinner out here, I don't think it's right for me to sit call and, you. Uh, sit and enjoy look, your throne. Take yeah. your feet up. You know, look, yeah, have a seat. look yeah, if I'm going to be a breadwinner around here, I don't think it's right for me to be calling you Mrs. Eight. Oh, and speaking of bread, I'm cutting down on my carbs. So you could plan well, that next week. Speaking of bread, Reba, can we add another Reba in here? Yeah. There's a lot of similarities between Reba McIntyre and Reba Hart. Very strong women, very family-oriented, and uh, used to getting themselves in a jam one way or the other. I'm cutting down on my carbs, so you could plan that for next week's menu. I'd really appreciate that. Well, sure, but I just have one question. Yes? Does Cheyenne have life insurance on you? I think so, what? Because you're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. Yeah. Hey, Reba. I love that. We'll probably tack to be continued on this. Mm -hmm. We don't have to resolve the Van Cheyenne Reba issue no, here. No, don't right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we can keep that. I mean, at least it's a compelling thing so far. We worry more about the broad strokes of the new stuff to put in. We don't worry about the finesse of it, just the broad strokes of it, because it's a process. It's a five-day process. This is day one. She thinks that you think you made a mistake in leaving me, marrying her everything. That's a direct quote. Go tell her she's wrong. Well, I don't think I can do that. And why the heck not? Because I do think I made a mistake. I'm moving to Orlando. <laughs> That's Orlando, we can start a new life. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Will? Yes. Uh, are, you, are you going up to talk to him? Yes. Okay. Good. I want to hold on to this scene before they change it. Yeah. Now, I, I, sometimes I, they uh, change it when it's working. Yeah. yeah. This one's really working. Oh. Take this one out of their Please book. Yeah, yeah. 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 So they Don't can't mess with it. it. <laughs> it's good. Hopefully the script will read well tomorrow. Knock wood. There's a chance it doesn't, and Friday we'll have to do this all over again. You know, we may go in and go, okay, well, look, there's a huge story problem. Let's fix it again. Good night, good night, good night. Good night. Farewell. And that's day one of a brand new script. That's our final script for the year. Well, the third season anyway. First day. And tomorrow we just do it all over again. So we'll see you tomorrow. Does he love you? Does he love you? Like he loves me. Like he loves me. I didn't do. Do your face more like that. Does he love you? Total Release is brought to you by Whirlpool and Habitat for Humanity. Join us. Hey, come here. I didn't have any green. I had to put magic marker on my arm. Look, this is Reba McIntyre, two days late on St. Patrick's Day. I know it. I am nice, so nice sorry. I'm, my leprechaun. I'm dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying the one thing that they don't know about you, that they asked me about... I, <laughs> no, I didn't tell him that, honey. You see the look on her face. <laughs> I was saying how much fun you were. What a little we do have a good there. time together. Yes, we yeah. do. Your pelvis should well. be closer together, I think. <laughs> Your, pelvis. Your pelvis should be closer together. <laughs> That's my boy. It's a lot of fun to be with these people because they're sweet. We sure can't be hugging long. Well, that's going to go into more... <laughs> we all really do like each other. I'm a survivor. <laughs> That is a rarity, I've heard. This is my first gig on the sitcom, because I didn't I didn't know. But the cameraman will tell me that this is not a normal set. I feel something in there. I know. No? I don't really have anything oh, in my hair. I just love that. Reba's funny. She's goofy. <laughs> we have so much fun on the set. There's time where we, we don't get stuff done because we're just laughing. Let me just... Let me get... Let me, uh, she loves it. Let She's me get now going to... Does he love you? Does he love you? Like he loves me? Like he loves me? I didn't do. Uh, you work, but you maybe you should. Don't do that. Okay, all right. Do all right. So. Does he love you? Does he love you? I'm you sorry, I, I, but I, I'm embellishing. Maybe you did it, my... Uh. I'm making it my that's own. That's not country. That's more pop. Okay, well, how should I do it? Do your face more like that. Does he love you? <laughs> See, perfect. That's how Thank I have you. to do you know what's amazing is this is how Faith Hill got started. <laughs> Ooh, that's spicy. Oh, that's hot. I am on fire. Ketchup helps everything. When it's too hot. Does he love you? It's really a job to keep friendships going. And you have to work at it. It's like a relationship with your husband, your partner. You've got to nurture these relationships. One of our crew members is having a baby, twins, and so we're having a baby shower for her. Boppy pillow baby bees. The more time that we get to spend together off the set, I think it's easier for us to work together. I just realized we didn't know each other when I had my uh, wedding shower. So I have a little list of things if you want to check off a few things for 
for that. No, I think, no. I think, I think your milk's gone bad no. there, Melissa. No. Country music stars yes. are usually nicer people than other music stars. But does Reba have a little bit of the diva deal going on here? Hmm. Let me answer that. <laughs> She's wonderful. She's just sweet as can be. So, I mean, Mitch, tell him how wonderful I am. Well, tell him, Mitch. Mitch remember what eating. she said. <laughs> tell them. Grass is getting tighter. What she really is. Okay. I know. Uh, is everybody going to have to say something nice about Reba? Because yeah. I didn't prepare anything. <laughs> well, I do have a new album out. It's called Room to Breathe. We're on our second single called Somebody. I will be touring this summer. I've already done three dates. And we'll be coming to a town near you. How about that? Great to see you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out to our city. That's Friday. Okay, I've gone from two scenes to three scenes and back to two scenes. Ooh, not a good sign. They side. hate you. They love you. They hate you. Oh. We have a lot of work to do. We have a new script. And it's a doozy. Goody, Very goody. Good one. It's a good one. But we have lots of redoing to do. Okay. okay. So the script was okay on Wednesday. For some reason, it kind of nosedived on Thursday. They thought they were making some changes that were helping it, and it really didn't help it. And they changed some things around, and today we have a wonderful show. We just saw the coolest apartment in the world. You should run it. Oh, wait, you can't. Because we did. It's on the 20th floor of this really cool building. 20th floor? Mm -hmm. Does they have a water cooler and a Xerox machine? Because you may have accidentally gotten a job. I kid me all the time. I say, you have no idea how to be a TV star. You should have fired like 50 people already. You should just like walk in one morning and fire the most popular person on the crew. Just because that's what they do. And uh, so she doesn't get it yet, but I'm working on her. She's not penthouse material. <laughs> Chuckle? The d double entendre. She's not... Penthouse photographed material? in penthouse. penthouse, and she's not going to be able to afford She's not penthouse material. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is for Hariba, I think, is that she was a giant global superstar in another field. So she knows what fame is. No. <laughs> she comes into this and looks at this as this is another creative endeavor. This is something that I want to do and do well, and she's smart enough to realize the way to do it is to surround myself with good actors, good writers, good producers, a good crew people, because if they all excel and do their jobs well, I'm going to look good. All right, we're on a five. Well, five. hey, how about a yeah. big round of yeah, applause big, for our boys? Yeah. Oh, wait, big, 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 big. When I have a good script, it will stage itself, basically. There's no question of, should I sit on the sofa? Shouldn't I sit on the sofa? Should I go to the fridge? What should I be doing this scene? I know what you're trying to get at, and you can't have a bird. Ready. Why would I carry this if I'm coming back? No, I'll leave, leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there and then pack it up. It's just, it's the script. It makes sense to uh, what the activity is going to be. I'll leave this in there and pack that up when I get back. You got it. Okay. Cool. Acting was something I always wanted to do. That's why I like to do more, bigger production shows instead of just musical shows, stand up and sing. And so that's when you kind of got to act out the story of the song. And then he'll say, he can't talk to a hysterical woman. Make that, can you make that rock? I can't. No. No. And then he'll say, oh, I can't talk to a hysterical <gasps> woman. Oh, I know, I know. When I started music videos, that's the first time I'd really done any so-called acting. And then I started doing movies. I've done about 10, 11 movies. And then I got the Broadway thing, playing Annie Get Your Gun. Back when I was on Broadway, I was just telling you something the other day. What was it, Normal? What did I say? And so going from that into this, the television show, I think it, it kind of validated my card. You know, it, it kind of made me, everybody else think, well, if she can do Broadway, at least she, you know, I'm sure she can do TV. Oh, my gosh. What? I'm off book. Are you serious? Yes, off yeah. book. Of course, yeah. I only have these little lines. <laughs> Going from music to movies to stage, sitcoms, they're not all as compatible as you might think. You know, they're not the same talent, but she does them all marvelously. I think instead of what, he says, I think I've ruined everybody's life. Think? We're well. Ooh, okay. That's going to be interesting. To some degree, I think it's just she, her enormous force of personality. It's just that tendency to have to watch it. She's also successful because she works really hard at all of them. You know, she doesn't take anything for granted. She, she's, she puts in the effort. All right, place that, <laughs> Ready, ready, Will. Here we go. And action, ding dong. Reba is the hardest working woman in show business. You come back from hiatus and everyone says what they do and, oh, I made an album. And you're like, I 
tiled the bathroom. Okay, right. well, half of it. Hey, Barbara Jean, I'm in a rush. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to ask you a quick question. How do you like having the name Reba? I prefer Knuckles, but I like it just fine. What <laughs> a dog. She expects what I she gives thing. herself, and being around that makes you want to be a better person. No, you can't afford to live in that place. What about the apartment on the third floor? No, we can't go to the third floor. We've already been to the mountaintop. You can't afford the mountaintop. You never even paid rent here in the floodplain. <laughs> You're going to do a job. Do it. And do it to the best of your ability. Don't waste everybody else's time. Now, I'm in the music business. I'm wasting people's time and their hard-earned money. If they come to see a concert, that's just 50%. You've got to give 110% all the time. I don't want to hurt you. Coming into television, my first sitcom. I think it would be a slap in every actress's face for me not to work my butt off on this show because I did get the job. I don't take any of this lightly. I'm a very blessed person. So I do work hard, and yes, I do get tired. I'm so tired at night, I'm irritable to Marvel and Shelby. I take it out on them because I guess it's what you do, but I just say, I don't want to do this ever again. And I get a good night's sleep, and I'm ripping and roaring, ready to get back on the set the next day. I'm just human. I did like on, I don't know if it's first or second script, you don't want to, oh no, you don't want to get into this. Yeah, you don't want to open this script, door. Yeah. I you, like you, that. She's got a lot of strong opinions, so it's pretty easy to write her. Our mistakes are always when we write her wishy-washy. We occasionally do it, just it doesn't work, because she's just not wishy-washy. It was hard to figure out what Reba's opinion is about the Barbara Jean having a baby. There's a lot of debate as to whether or not Reba should or should not be involved in this. My own personal opinion is Reba would think this is a terrible idea, but it's not my, it's not my business. Anything more we can do with her, if it's just Reba basically justifying, you know what, I, I wasn't consulted the first time you got pregnant, I'm not going to be this time, I've, you know, I've washed my hands of, of, you know, this is not my, something so we can get a little bit more so we can understand why, that her strong opinion is, I'm not going to have an opinion. I mean, whatever it is, because it feels so... Yeah, yeah that's not bad. Sure. Wait, I, I have to put something in here. Uh, Anytime the showrunner says... That's not bad to one of the studio guys. That means it was an incredible idea. Okay, move along. Now I'm retired. Last one of the season. Thank you, guys. All right, then. Have a good weekend. Here we are in Houston, Texas. This is the best iced tea I've had in God knows when. Oh my gosh. Now it is showtime. There's the billboard. It's really ironic that the coming back and touring is turn at rodeos because that's where pretty much I got my start singing the national anthem back in '74. And here, after two summers off, I'm back singing at rodeos again. I run barrels. I rodeoed. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Loved it. Didn't win very much. I was a third-generation rodeo brat. My grandpa was a world champion in '34. Daddy was a world champion steer roper in '57, '58, and '61. And then I rodeoed for 10 years. But see, all of us kids learned how to ride at a very early age because Daddy had a, a working cattle ranch. True cowgirl. More of a cowgirl than uh, a rodeo contestant. I have fallen off, been dragged off, but thrown off. No, I can't say. See, that would have been giving me more credentials as a cowgirl if I'd have said I've been thrown off, but I kind of fell off. <laughs> That's horrible, isn't it? This one? Okay. All right. Thank you, then. Reba, you have always handled your fame with such grace. Oh, thanks. What do you attribute that to? Growing up in Oklahoma. People in Oklahoma, they aren't braggarts. They aren't, uh, look here what I have. They're very modest people. And I think growing up in the rodeo business, too, that's the way they always were. It was very humble. And so the work ethic and that attitude, I think, has gotten me further down the road than I would have if I'd come up raised some from some other state. Honestly, I do.
this year, we were just kind of tiptoeing back since we've had two, two years off, doing a lot of fairs, rodeos. I can see where it'd be pretty scary for a lot of people who are not familiar with rodeo to come in because it's totally different. You're out in the middle of the big arena and the sound's a little weird. In 2001, we had the five girls that went out, Martina McBride, Sarah Evans, Jamie O'Neill, and Carolyn Don Johnson, and myself. And we had the big tour, everybody coming out and doing their show with their band on the big stage. And it was a lot of fun. This year, I wanted to bring it back to the music, the basics. Whenever we play down in Texas, we always, always like to go to a Mexican food restaurant. Yeah. It's the best iced tea I've had, God knows when. Oh my really? gosh, <laughs> sweet tea. And what was so neat about this time is that we all got to tell them war stories. <laughs> when it came time for me to come out to play, to do my star section for the rodeo, they wanted me, since I'm from a rodeo family, to ride this horse coming in. And so they said, oh man, he's, he's broke, he's great. Just run him around the arena. And that's exactly what I did. I was both hands trying to get this horse to stop. Hands hit up in the air, and we, we circled. Fans bamping. <laughs> because we we haven't toured for the last two years, so this is our first time to get to play back in Houston since y'all have changed over from the Astrodome. Right. Totally different. We love being here. We ate Mexican food after sound check, so I'm going back and take a nap now. <laughs> nice to meet y'all. Thanks again for the beautiful billboards. That was so sweet. Enjoy the show. Bye-bye. Every year, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo awards millions of dollars in scholarships to graduating seniors in Texas. Is there a light in your eye or something? Uh, two okay. of them. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it seems... You just relax some more? Yeah, yeah. Saying? Okay. Hi, this is Reba McIntyre. Thank you for supporting Rodeo Houston. Narvel and I are a great team. We love each other. We respect each other very, very much. We both work very hard, whether it's business, family, or raising Shelby. Flip, fear, and survivor. That's an interesting idea. Yeah, that probably is a better idea. We're very blessed. And if it ended today, I mean, we couldn't say we've been shortchanged at all. Nice to nice see, see you. you. Oh, look right there. <laughs> we'll take another picture together. I love that jacket. It's beautiful. This is Brett Friedman. Hello, there. my hair and makeup. <laughs> for the videos and for my shows. You have to experience the glamour. I'm actually taking some of her glamour away. Yes. We're trying to tone her down. Hi, how you doing? Good to see ya. Hey, hey, hey. Well, all right, now it is showtime. This is the first year I've toured since 2001. I didn't enjoy it as much three years ago. I did it because I had the obligation of getting out there and touring the music. But I think this year I did it because I was ready to get back out and do it for fun.
I think the audience had a real good time. We did. It's good to be back singing again. I didn't realize how much I missed it until I got up on stage. It's an emotional roller coaster doing a real up tempo, happy song, and then going to a sad song. It, it drains you emotionally. By the time you're through, being on, it's kind of like, that was a trip. Right. You like right. 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 That's fine right there. Now, Reba, we need to ask Keep about the, the tour that uh, you just you kind of got it going. Matter of fact, I've already done three shows this year, Houston, San Antonio, and then May, June, July, August, September, October, and our last one is in November. As we're already doing the show, we'll be taking off on the weekends doing concert tours. One last question. We look around here, all these director's chairs, and Narvel's is here, but we didn't see yours. Well, my, my name's on all of them. You know, that's true. Yeah, on the back, on the, the back. back. Yeah. <laughs> I, gotta... I don't get to sit down, though. That's the problem. <laughs> well, Reba, thank you. Good to see you. You too. Good thank to you see very you. Much. Good visiting with thank you. Thank you, too. Bye. Bye. I'm going to go work now. All right, guys. Uh, happy Monday. Come on in and join us. Join the party. We're back. On day four of the process, we do what's called camera blocking. And in camera blocking, the actors will perform the show for all of the technical people. So, what do you think? I think it's a great idea. A little hug there, right? So, what do you think? I think it's a great idea. The director has determined his shots. All that information is given to the camera people. You keep the two cameras. All right. Some of this will work. And then we go step by step, scene by scene, move by move, line by line, and make sure that all of it is covered on camera. Dennis, a single, please. Got it. We do what's known as the four camera style or the multiple camera style, which was created by Desi Arnaz for I Love Lucy. We roll four cameras simultaneously, so we are covering the show from many angles at the same time. And the key is not to let all the cameras do the same thing all the time. You can't have four wide shots, you can't have four close-ups on Reba. You've got to figure out and choreograph what they're doing. The cameras have to do their whole choreography and where they go. And meanwhile, you're still working on the script and hoping the script works. And you go down there and say, oh, by the way, we changed this scene. And what? No. Nah. You got to redo all the cameras. And they really love that when we do that. And then we'll do another run through for the writers uh, after lunch. Because I do think I made a mistake. Uh, the writers like to see it one more time just to change a few jokes. And then she can call you and go, oh, Barbara Jean needs me. You come rush. I just, you said you could press I knew you'd come over if I sounded panic. Anyway, when I want to talk to you. <laughs> That'd be great. Okay. Thanks, that'll help me a lot. Yeah, I'll change great. that up. She normally surprise. yells in these sessions, so this, yeah. is, this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Reba, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Yeehaw. You ready, Bob? Everybody ready to go? Yeah. Reba enters and says. Well, oh, wait a minute. What's the last thing he says? Because there's two to three new things. Yeah, there are. Brock and I are having another baby. Wow, how'd you get him to agree to that? He doesn't know yet. Sometimes we like to save the energy for tonight's show, so we talk like this. Blurderer. We are about to go on hiatus here, which is a nice showbiz word for layoff during the summer, where nobody works and nobody gets paid. Be nice. Oh, let me guess. You're looking for Brock. No, actually, I'm looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barbara Jean, what's a, oh, I, I wouldn't say hey. Barbara Jean, what's the matter? Well, what I find very satisfying about the television show is that it gives me more of a family, normal life. It's a consistent schedule. And I'm in the same place, same dressing room, same stage. And it's working with the same people. What'd you call me? Oh, fine. No. <sighs> to get to act on the television no. show is a lot of fun with people you like to work with. It's the last day. No. Let me cut your hair. No. <laughs> You got all summer to grow it out if I make no. it. No. He would help if I put on something sexy? Certainly wouldn't help me. Let's do the skin. Okay. Aww. Let's Come on in. Come on, come on. Here we go, guys. In. Action. I am so excited. We're finally getting our own apartment, Van. I cannot wait to get our own furniture. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey, think your mom would give us this table? 
Tuesday's show day. I mean, that's the big day. That's our final chance to kind of tweak it. You know, any big things, we got to fix them. Mom, what do you think? I think it's a great idea. You want me to still hug them? Uh, yeah. Do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hug them both. Hug them it's both. So hug them it's just awkward. It it's awkward. <laughs> what? It's awkward. It's awkward? Yeah, we've got chairs and stuff in between us. All right. No, don't hug them. Forget it. That's all right. Thank you. We choose to what we call block and shoot in the afternoon. Blocking and shooting is shooting the scene without an audience. Good. We don't do an audience until 6 o'clock. My mommy, she's yeah. taller than me. It's all about Reba. <laughs> There's a huge difference between day takes and audience takes usually. The energy is just completely different. You're just using it as a safe thing. In case everything goes wrong, you wind up with people in the audience who just speak French and they don't get the show at all, you know? You can use the day takes on that one. Brock and I are having another baby. It's a big gamble. Every script is a big gamble. It's a horse race to me. You never know which one's going to turn out really good. And you never know which one's going to be a flop. Ah, we got the apartment? No. I'll tell you one thing, I will never hug again. I do think I made a mistake. Yeah. You've got to get it out there. Oh, yeah, don't miss it. Oh, man, don't miss Reba. This is my 57 taping of Reba. I might come all the way from Louisville, Kentucky to see Reba. Woo, Reba! Yeah. Hi, Reba, love ya. Please drop it. He's done that a million times. That van makes me so angry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, she's getting it. Cut to. I can't wait to get back to home. Oh, I miss my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be the best audience that Reba has ever had. Is that right, folks? <laughs> Can I get an I believe in Reba? I believe in Reba. <laughs> Everybody on the show kind of carries that with them that we have this sort of nice thing that we're doing here. Yeah, you know, this is a show that on Tuesday nights before tapings, we have a prayer meeting. It don't happen a lot in television. That's, that's unique. We give you all the praise and the glory for the success of the show. And though maybe some people don't think it's a good one, we hope to someday they'll change their mind and laugh along with us. <laughs> Reba's really a wonderful center for the show. She's great that way for virtually everybody that works on the show and for virtually everybody that watches the show. Okay, let's get it in on three. One, two, three. Right now, we're getting set to take the stage. You're here on a special night, final episode of our third season, ladies and gentlemen. Working on this show is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. This kind of atmosphere is very rare, and so I'm going to enjoy every minute. Well, I think everybody's here. Who are we missing? Anybody? We're missing Reba. Oh, where Reba. is she? There Where's she is. Yeah. Kiss her. 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 Thanks to all of you, and that is true. It's all based on your love, your respect your energy, your laughter, your love for Reba and the show. And we're going to make this a great one tonight. Is that right, folks? And then it's showing at 6 o'clock. And it's high energy. You come down, you get the cast intros, and start the show. And boy, it's it's that first scene you're just waiting. Is, is the audience any good? You know, are they going to be into this? Are they going to hate it? Because you can tell a lot from that first scene. Man, action. Hey, have you guys seen Jake? Yeah, he's upstairs in the bathroom looking in the mirror. He's discovered the joy of hair care products. <laughs> so young, so vain. Do you like my hair? I like the spiky thing? Like when you sit down, it feels much more like a play, so you kind of assume that it will move along like a play. Maybe there'll be a little intermission, but it's going to kind of run to time. And it's just not like that. And then the first time you stop, go oh, cut in the middle of a scene, or start up in the middle of a scene, it, it, you can tell a lot of them are just like, what? What the? Where are you going? I'm gonna go measure your room. It's time for more, Mom. <laughs> it was flowing so well, don't you think? 
Anything, guys? No? Yeah, no, we got something. Okay. We change lines, too, in between takes, and that'll always throw them. Nothing new? Uh, Melissa's now gonna say, uh... uh but you, you were touching. You were stuck together like two gummy bears on a hot summer day. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> the gummy worms. You were touching! You were, you were stuck together like two gummy worms on a hot summer day! <laughs> We like to keep it moving fast, as fast as we can. We generally just like to get a couple of takes. And I think it helps the actors. The actors know, you know, we're not going to give them forever to get this right. So they really bring an energy and it really enlivens the performance, we think. What the heck was all that baby stuff? I didn't know she was going to blurt it out. Well, you didn't stop her. That's not my job. You two people are the ones coming barging in my door. Thought when I raised you and got you remarried, you'd be more independent. Reba, who is the total professional, comes in prepared. She sets a standard for everybody because she brings her discipline to the show so that if you have a star who's setting that standard, you've got gold. Do you remember when I told you before that I have a really hard time talking to Brock about important things? Yes. Well, I still do. The thing about Reba McIntyre is what you see is what you get, and I think that is why she has been so successful doing everything she's done is because an audience connects with her immediately because they feel as though she isn't putting on a show. She's a great deal of life that's coming out of her. And in a show like this where a person like that is in difficult life circumstances, to try to keep that spark of life alive under great pressure is, I think, a really exciting thing. Somebody say action. Last scene and the third scene. She is so enjoyable. She is so great to be around that people want to invite her into their homes every week. Okay, let's do this thing for yep, somebody change your right. mind. Brock, go after her. She thinks that you think you made a mistake by leaving me and marrying her and everything. Go tell her she was wrong. I don't think I can do that. And why the heck not? Because I do think I made a mistake. No. <laughs> I love life. I wish I had more energy to enjoy it more because there's not enough hours in the day to suit me. Nobody more deserving of the Johnny Cash Visionary Award than Reba McIntyre. This is my office. So now I'm going to get my purse, and then we'll go to the Flame Worthy Awards. You can't come in here. This is bathroom. <laughs> This award that I'm receiving tonight is the Johnny Cash Visionary Award. Not that I thought the video up. That's not that kind of vision. Whoever's in New England was the first single off the album, and so we did the video to make a big push to help album sales and get the radio to play it more. Dolly Parton's hosting tonight. Did you know that? I used to ask my niece Garrett, I said, when she was a little big girl, I said, Garrett, who's your favorite country singer? She said, Dolly Parton. Oh. <laughs> Dolly Parton? What about Reba McIntyre? No, ain't ball. Dottie Parton. I love award shows. I love to go to them because it's always, you never know what's going to happen. It's best when you don't go to rehearsals, too. No, I'm not performing tonight. I'm going to sit out in the audience and watch everybody else perform and entertain me. I'm going to get up in there and say, I didn't have anything planned. And then reach down here and just pull out a, like a roll of toilet paper with <laughs> notes and stuff scribbled. And adrenaline's flowing and they know it's showtime. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you, Lance. Boy, it's hard to top this. I'm joined now by Miss Reba McIntyre. Looking fabulous. Well, thank this you, and very cool. too. Well, thank you. I gotta keep up with you big stars. Oh, big twinkles, you mean. <laughs> hey there. Hey there. There you go. Thanks so thank much. You. Oh, gosh, I thought that was thunder and they're all out there in that rain. Great entertainer, 
and she's she's the best. She is the reigning queen of country. <laughs> Got a Jack Daniels lounge, eh? Yeah. Well, that sounds well, interesting. I'm a Reba McIntyre woman. I have been for a long time, am now, and shall forever be. I'm really excited that Reba is receiving the Visionary Award. She is my all-time favorite country music star. You know, when you're in the country music business, everybody's gone on the weekend. We're all working. So the only time I ever get to see my country music buddies are at award shows. <laughs> This year, there is nobody more deserving of the Johnny Cash Visionary Award than Reba McIntyre. Thank you very much. I'd like to say thank you to CMT. Thank you very much to everyone who's ever watched the video that we've gotten to be a part of. The first video I ever made was Whoever's in New England 18 years ago. Making that video was my first opportunity to act, and I had no idea that videos would play such a large part in my music and that it was also preparing me for one of the jobs I have now. Maybe none of this would have happened if it weren't for making that very first video. Thank you, fans. Thank you, country music. Thank you, CMT. Love y'all. Johnny Cash Visionary Award. Man, that's the icing on the cake. All right, get your shirt on. Unless you're Brad Pitt. <laughs> oh we do these for charities, for benefits, for people who just want to keep safe. What does that mean? Sells them all on eBay. I do not sell them on eBay. Crown and seven. Crown and seven. Pimento cheese tomato sandwich with Miracle Whip on whole wheat toast. I don't care. <laughs> he must be important though. He's got a microphone. People with microphones are important. I learned that in my other job. <laughs> <laughs>